Thanks, Angel. So I want to start out today by telling you a little bit about my experience with education. I loved school. I was one of those kids, you've probably all had one before, who was really good at figuring out what the teacher wanted and giving them exactly what they wanted. And I did pretty well in school. But when I graduated from college, I felt like something was missing. I had a lot of ideas. I wanted to change the world, but I had no idea where to start. And in hindsight, I think there were two key things that were missing. First, I just spent the last 16 years learning how to get the right answer. So the idea of trying something that might lead to a wrong answer petrified me. The second is that I didn't have a ton of experience with solving complex problems that had no one clear solution. So I was kind of at a loss for where to start. So fast forward three or four years, and I'm in grad school. Big surprise, I love school. I went back to school. About midway through grad school, I took a class in design thinking, and it changed my life. And the reason why was because it gave me those complex problem-solving skills. They taught us a methodology for how to address a problem for which you had no clear idea what the end solution should look like. We were challenged with all kinds of different things, ranging from how to come up with a plan to get youth to plan for their financial future, to putting on a hip hop concert on campus for some rising rap stars. Neither of these areas were areas I felt like I had much expertise, but given this process, I felt confident to approach it. We also got a chance to potentially fail. If I'm being totally honest, our first try at putting on a hip hop concert for up and coming Arkansas rappers, not so successful. But I gained a lot of confidence. I also learned something that surprised me. See, I had always wanted to be an innovative person, but I didn't really think I was that creative because I couldn't sit in a room by myself and come up with 100 creative ideas every day. And for some reason, that was my image of what it took. What I learned from this process was that actually, it was about identifying a need somewhere in the community and then going out and asking a lot of really good questions and through those questions, uncovering that brilliant idea. So after graduate school, I joined a team that was starting a school in South Africa. And our mission was to transform the continent by developing a new generation of leaders. Now, Africa has a lot of complex challenges, which means it has a lot of opportunity for innovation. And we wanted to prepare our students to thrive in this environment. So we challenge each student to come up with a culminating service project that would have a lasting impact on a local African community of some sort. And they use the design process to solve these problems. One example was a team that decided to look at the issue of skin cancer in South Africa. South Africa has the second highest rate of skin cancer in the world, second only to Australia. And over 50% of cases are not caught in time to actually treat them. So clearly there was a need. And these kids went out into the community and they started interviewing youth and experts and anyone that they could come up with. And they came up with a number of very interesting insights. The first thing that they discovered was that unlike Australia, where the majority of the population was lighter skinned, and when they started, when, they, when their skin burned, they had that natural alert system that they were being overexposed to the sun, the majority of the youth in South Africa had darker skin and therefore didn't have that natural alert system. They also realized that if they wanted to get youth excited about thinking about long-term health concerns, they had to make it really engaging. So they tried a bunch of different iterations and ended up with an eight-week program that took the kids out into hospitals, had them talk to cancer patients, learn about the emotional side of it, and they gave each participant a bracelet, kind of a cool-looking beaded bracelet that they could wear that would change color when it was overexposed to the sun. So they addressed that issue of the lack of a natural alert system. So this is an example of where these kids could have just looked at Australia or one of the other places that has big issues with skin cancer and tried to create an education plan based on best practices. But instead, they went out into the community, and what they found was that they were able to come up with a really high leverage solution that had a lasting impact. And this program got national recognition and has now actually spread to other countries. 
So what is this design thinking that I keep talking about? Essentially, design thinking is a process, a process for addressing complex problems. And you start with empathy, going out into the community and asking specific users what they need. This sets it apart from our standard problem solving in that we're really challenging kids to ask those good questions. And oftentimes, in the process of developing empathy, you realize that the initial challenge that you thought you were solving is not the underlying challenge that's most important. So you often redefine the challenge. Then you move into this concept of prototyping and rapid iteration. This is a great antidote to that one and done model that we use a lot in school. So that rather than creating kids like myself who are looking at how I can get the right answer, you create kids who are looking at how to come up with the best possible solution, who are willing to take a risk because they know they're going to get to try it, they know they're going to get feedback. And the result is you get kids who have much higher resilience and much greater creativity. So how is this impacting schools? I've worked with schools around the country, and this issue of engagement, which often goes hand in hand with achievement, is huge. I had two conversations recently that really brought this home for me. The first was with the superintendent of a school, of a school district, and she sat me down and she said, you know, if I'm being honest, by third grade, our kids are over school. Third grade, and these kids no longer have any more intrinsic motivation to learn. I had another conversation with a high school teacher at one of the highest performing schools in their area, and he said, by the, end, by the time we get kids, when they've graduated from our middle school, they're so burnt out that we have so many behavioral issues that it's challenging to teach. Again, these kids have hopefully at least eight years of school left, but they no longer have that intrinsic motivation. They're done. On the flip side, when I've looked at schools who are using design thinking, I have teachers talking about how they have trouble getting their kids to go out to recess because they're so excited about what they're learning that they just want to stay and get more. I actually run a middle school club here at Colorado Academy. And literally, when I come to the club, these kids start doing their happy dance because it's design thinking time. And then, the other day, I was getting ready to assign them some optional homework. And one of the kids comes running up to my desk and starts panting like a little puppy dog because he's so excited about what this homework is possibly going to be. This is the kind of engagement that we want to see in kids. We want to see kids taking ownership of their education. But for me, it's not just about getting kids to be successful in school and be excited in school. It's about preparing them for afterwards. So if we go back to that school in South Africa, the first year that we had a graduating class, our kids got into Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Oxford, wherever they wanted to go. And yeah, they were high-performing kids, but there's a lot of high-performing kids out there. What these kids have, what I believe set them apart, was that when they sat down to write that college essay, or when they sat down to, at that college interview, they had something real to talk about. They had addressed really complex problems, and they were passionate about something. So when they looked at what their college career was going to be, they knew what they wanted to get out of it. But again, it's not even just about preparing kids for college. It's also about preparing kids to thrive after school. I have a colleague who I've done some work with who, lives down, who works down in Florida. And every year, she has her elementary school do a big design challenge. And at the end of it, they have a design fair, kind of similar to your concept of a science fair. And one year, she decided to invite a number of the local businessmen to come to the science fair just to check it out. They were curious, what is this design thinking thing that you're doing with your kids? And about halfway through the day, one of the men, the businessmen, comes up to her with this kind of stricken look on her face, on his face. And the first thing she thinks is, oh my god, what did some third grader say to this guy to totally offend him? And he looks at her and he says, I just had a conversation about business with a third grader, and it totally made sense. <laughs> so if we're getting our kids to be thinking about these complex issues at a really young age, just imagine how prepared they're going to be to thrive when they graduate from school. As 21st century educators, we don't know what we're preparing our kids for. But if we can arm them with these really good complex problem-solving skills, if we can get them to see themselves as creative innovators, 
I feel much more confident that they are going to thrive after school. And rather than having kids like myself, who are looking to get the right answer, we'll have kids who are looking to come up with the best possible way to solve the complex challenges they will face. Thank you.